Welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we are going to talk about the cash flow statement. So what we're going to go through is we're going to discuss what the cash flow statement is. We're going to talk about the indirect versus direct method, understand cash inflows and outflows, talk through the different bucketization of CFOA, CFFA, and CFIA, operating, financing, investing, and we'll go through why cash is king and why we love the cash flow statement and then what a few of its limitations are. So the cash flow statement is one of the three main financial statements along with the income statement and the balance sheet. The amount of cash generated or used by a business over a given period of time is what you're going to see in the cash flow statement. Um, and it's going to show you the changes in cash balance from one year to the next. So why do we care? Why is it important? So most large companies use accrual accounting. Um, so revenue does not necessarily equal the cash that's coming in and expenses do not necessarily show you the cash going out. So, um, an example of that would be a capitalized asset. So you may go buy, you have a company and you buy a dump truck. It's an expensive capital expenditure and you're going to actually have cash going out the door. But if you use accrual and accounting, you may only take one fifth or one seventh or one tenth of the, that cost as an expense. And you're going to amortize the rest over the life of that asset. Uh, similarly, you know, on the revenue side, you can sell something on credit. You don't actually receive cash in uh, or some sort of long-term agreement where they might not pay you for a while. So the cash flow statement will help us understand the health of the company's profit. Do we have cash that's coming along with our revenues? And you need to know if a company is liquid enough to meet its obligations. Um, can it pay for pay its creditors? And you also want to know if they have the cash to grow, develop. Um, can they invest in new products and new business? This is the cash flow statement. It's an example from Microsoft, and you can see you've got net cash from operations, financing, and investing. This just gives you an over, overarching view of what the cash flow statement looks like. So companies have two options for how the, to show their cash flows, the indirect or the direct method. The direct method is very Simple. It's looking at cash coming in, cash going out. So cash collected from your customers, plus or minus what you pay to your suppliers, plus or minus what you pay for expenses, and that's your CFOA, cash from operating activities. Whereas the indirect method takes your net income, adjusts for depreciation, and then adjusts based on whether other accounts go up or down. Now, the vast majority of public companies and most private use in the indirect method. The direct is easier. It's probably what you would use for your own personal cash inflows and outflows. You know what you make, you know what you spend, but the volume and complexity of transactions for a big business, it's actually much harder for a company to do the direct method. And most companies therefore use the indirect method, which is really based off of your income statement and your balance sheet. So here is a simplified look at a statement of cash flows, and we're going to talk through each of the line items. So you might be a little confused, annoyed, bored. Um, you may have questions. Please leave comments, questions, things you would like us to go into, um, and you can also like or dislike the video. Okay, with that, we'll keep moving. So an example. What is... Before, before getting into the details here, um, take a minute to stop through logically what happens in a business transaction. What is an accounts receivable? A person or a company bought something from you and know they owe you money. They have a legal obligation. So let's say you have zero dollars of sales and zero dollars of receivables, January, February, but then in March, you sell thousand dollars, all due to be paid to, by the customer in April. Your accounts receivable at the beginning of the quarter was zero, and at the end of the quarter, it's a thousand. How much cash did the customer pay you as at the end of the 
of March as at the end of that first quarter. None. So you sold something you did not get paid yet. So this is a use of cash. When looking at the statement of cash flows, it's important or it's helpful to think about sources and uses of cash or inflows and outflows of cash. So accounts receivable. If your accounts receivable goes down, that means more people paid you money, you got their cash, that's an inflow or source. Now on the other side, if AR goes up, that means more people owe you money, you sold something and you didn't get paid, that's an outflow or use. So inventory, if inventory goes down, that means you sold more, you don't have cash tied up in that inventory, you've gotten cash for that, you're not paying to for have additional stuff on hand, you've got cash, inflow source. If inventory goes up, that means you're spending money to make stuff that you're not selling, that's a use of cash. If AP goes up, that means you got supplies, but you did not pay money for them, that's a good thing. So you're holding the cash instead of paying your supplier, inflow. If AP goes down, that means you've been paying suppliers or reducing what you have. Cash is going out the door. Plant equipment. If it goes down, you're probably spending less on new P&E. So you have less money going out. If P&E goes up, that means you're buying new machines or equipment. So money is going out the door to pay for that. A new loan, if you take out a new loan, that means the lender is giving you cash, so you have money coming in. That is a cash inflow. And on the flip side, if you pay back a loan, you're giving cash back to that bank or that lender, so you have money going out. This is a very important way to think about this, and if this makes sense in your head, I think a lot of the rest of the cash flow statement will make sense. Okay, three big buckets of statement of cash flows. Operating activities, investing activities, financing activities. So let's dig into cash flow from operations. Operating activities is where you have cash that's coming in or going out for things that a business normally does. Things like getting paid for selling your product, paying your employees, paying your rent for your building, or buying your supplies that you need to make your product. Uh, companies want to collect, it's very simple, right? You want to collect more cash than you're paying out. Almost everything in your income statement is revenue or expense. In, in revenue or expense is CFOA, except for depreciation. And that leads us right into the next topic. So as you walk the cash flow from operations, you start with net income. Like we said, almost everything on the P&L is in revenue and expense are a part of CFOA. So you take revenue minus expense, and net, net income is effectively revenue minus expense with one exception, which is depreciation. That is, we call we say that's non-cash, but what does that actually mean? Well, you spend cash when you actually purchase something, but depreciation is the expense that you incur over time. So depreciation is reducing your net income on the income statement, even though there's no change in cash associated with the depreciation. So we add it back here. Then you have working capital. So this goes back to the sources and uses, the inflows and outflows that we talked about, where you have AR here as an example. If AR goes down, that means more people paid you money. You collected their cash. So that would be positive. You'd have a positive number here. And then you have similar logic on inventory and AP. So let's go through some examples there. So accounts receivable. If your accounts receivable ended 1Q at 100 and ended 2Q at 200, the change your plus $100 in accounts receivable, is your cash going up or down? It's going down, right? You have 100 more dollars that customers have not paid you. Inventory going from 250 to 175. That says your inventory balance is down $75. That's a good thing, right? I don't have that money tied up on inventory. I effectively sold that inventory. AP, down $25. That is a cash flow bad guy. It's, a, it's an outflow or use of cash. I paid 25 more dollars to my suppliers. A few final thoughts on CFOA. So, 
when you look at this, you're trying to see if a company is generating cash flow from its normal operations, or does it need to go get it somewhere else? And one thing that investors look at is they like CFOA to be in line with your operating income. That signifies a high quality of earnings. My sales are converting to cash. Now, it's important to consider that there's different elements for different life cycles of the business. So companies that are early in their life are going to have a hard time generating CFOA in line with their income. You can use CFOA combined with CFFA, so operating and financing, and you can, you can use that to derive if a company can generate enough cash to pay its obligations. Moving on to cash flow from investing activities. So what is it? This is cash that's going in, coming in or going out to invest back in the business. So this would be like buying or selling your building or land, purchasing or selling machines or other assets. Um, it could also be buying or selling investments in other com companies. I think for most com companies, what you're often going to see here is outflows on investing activities. You know, some companies have more active buying and selling, um, but most companies, you know, manufacturing companies, they may occasionally sell a land or building or a machine, but they're selling them at often much, much far, far depressed values from what they originally bought it and not enough to, to show a gain here. So purchases of P&E are, uh, are one of the biggest drivers. So it's going to be a net amount and you may see separate lines for additions additions of P&E and sales of pp and &E, but they're both part of cash flow from investing activities. Um, we add back depreciation in CFOA and CFIA. This is where you actually see the outflow for the purchase of those assets. So in the prior example, we talked about how you add depreciation back. This is where you see that, that cash outflow. And if a company is spending more than it's generating, cash flow from investing will be negative on the cash flow statement. So cash flow from financing activities. What is it? It is related to financing the business. It's aptly named. So this is things like buying, borrowing or repaying loans, uh, you know, getting capital from a bank, uh, getting cash from an investor or paying dividends out to your investors. Um, it could also be stock buybacks. So, uh, you know, public companies often do stock buybacks and this would be a financing activity. So the movement of cash in financing activities is typically between a company and a bank owner shareholder. Uh, when a company takes out a loan or gets funding from its owners, the cash is coming, that's cash coming in. When a company is paying back its loans, or buying back stock, or or paying a dividend, that's cash going out. That's a negative on cash flow from financing activities. A few examples: so you have a increase in debt, or, or or a decrease in debt. That's borrowing money from a bank. It's cash inflow, paying back a loan, cash outflow. Issue common stock, you have cash coming in, buying back, cash going out. Pay out dividends to shareholders, that's a cash outflow. So a few additional thoughts on cash flow. So the cash balance on its own just doesn't tell you enough. Um, it, the balance could go up. If your cash balance goes up, it could be just because you borrowed money from a bank. That doesn't necessarily put you in a better position. Um, it could be because you had idle cash and you bought back stock or paid a dividend. Um, so you really need to start to understand the different buckets of cash flow, operating, investing, and financing, and understand what's good, what's bad, and, and how to look at these in conjunction with the other financial statements. Um, you know, cash is so important. If it's mismanaged, you could have a profitable business that's revenues far exceed its expenses, but they don't collect the cash and they have too many outflows, they can go bankrupt. Um, so at the end of the day, cash is king. Cash is more important in the long term is more important than profit. Um, profit should kind of follow your cash. 
And within cash, CFOA is really the most important. You want to see a business that's going to succeed and, and be around for the long haul. It's a business that can consistently generate positive CFOA. There are some limitations, a lot of limitations with the cash flow statement. One, it doesn't really stand on its own. It's really calculated as a derivative of the income statement and the balance sheet um, in the indirect method. And you need to understand what's going on in those statements to really understand your cash flow position. It's backward looking, as are all of our financial statements. Um, you need additional analysis to uh, try to pro forma anything out. And lastly, you know, more difficult to compare across companies just because companies have different levels of requirement for capital investment, different sources of that investment. Um, and there are other limitations. And, and as with all of these, you really just don't want to rely too, too fully on any one statement. All of the financial statements are really meant to, to enhance one another and be used cooperatively. So that's all we have for today. Please subscribe, like or dislike, um, and we'd love to hear your comments, feedback, questions you have, other things you'd like us to cover. Um, but that's it, and we'll be back with new videos very soon.